Thank you for tuning in to the Be Blessed broadcast. Let's go into the service already in progress. 9 and 10, the word of the Lord declares, but they that will be rich will fall into temptation and a snare and many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money, verse 10, is the root of all evil, while some have coveted after it, have erred or have wandered away from the faith. And this is the reality of it, because the, when we're pursuing things and we don't have a transformed mind, we think that it's in the power of our hand that we are accumulating these things. When you read that in Deuteronomy chapter 8, you are reading the law that was given to the children of Israel, to their children, mm -hmm. the second law, as they were preparing to go into the promised land. And God was just making it abundantly clear that when you get over there, yeah. it, it's going to be me that's going to do this. That I'm the one that's going to give you the power yeah. to get wealth yeah. so that I can establish my covenant, yeah. a covenant that I made to Abraham some years ago. I'm keeping it because I'm an everlasting covenant yeah. keeper. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. know how to lie. I yeah. don't know how to break yeah. my covenant. Yeah. 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 And even though some of your forefathers have died in the desert, it does not undo my covenant I made with Abraham. He kept his part, and I'm going to keep my part. Yeah. Yeah. But I must serve you notice that when you are preparing to go over there, yeah. because y'all don't know me like Abraham knew me, I want you to understand the kind of God that I am. I am the one who will give you the power to get wealth. He declares in Psalm 75, I'm the one. He said, the God is judge. I set up one and I take down another. That promotion does not come from the east. It doesn't come from the west. But promotion comes from above. And if we don't have a transformed mind when we're in the kingdom of God, yeah. we'll continue to operate with worldly principles, ah. thinking it's by the sweat of our brawl that we are increasing, even though the word of God said that God is judge and I set up one and take down another. Yeah, yeah. We don't want to believe that even though we're in the kingdom. Woo. We're still operating in worldly principles that if I work two and three and four jobs, this is how God can bless someone with a part-time job to live better than someone with two jobs because our faith and our confidence is in the source and not in the resource. The world offers resources, but God is the source of all blessings. All things come of thee, O God, and of thine own have I given thee. And when Paul is writing this letter, he's trying to help Timothy to understand that many people are erring from the faith. We see it in the 21st century church today. Yeah, yeah. People will take a shift on Sunday like it's a Monday. Right. Right. And, and, and have no conviction about this being yeah. the Sabbath day. We know the true Sabbath is a Saturday, yeah. but you have to have a day where you're going to honor God. Yeah. Yeah. You, 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 you can't just say, well, you know, it, it is what it is. I have to work. This is why we encourage believers that when you go into an assignment, because that's what your job is, it is an assignment for the kingdom of God. You are to go on that job and to be a beacon of light for the kingdom. The check is simply a byproduct of you accepting the assignment. God can raise you up. He can promote you there. He can help you to be supervisor, manager. He can hook you up in any position he chooses when you're faithful in that assignment. But we get in the assignment and we become more faithful to the job than to the God. God, yeah. who gave us the assignment yeah. Enoch yeah. and this is where the problem lies Sonia yeah. because we'll start sh making decisions to take shifts that don't even honor our God when the very reason we were sent there was to be a light in the place of darkness yeah. Yeah. because our minds haven't shifted yeah. we're chasing the money as opposed to chasing the father yeah. Yeah. we're not trying to promote the kingdom's agenda oh. we're promoting our own greedy agenda yeah. For more and more money. Yeah. And this is why Paul tells Timothy that while some covet after it, they have erred from the faith. Because anytime you get disconnected from the source, it's just a matter of time that you're going to be left to operate on your own without the help of God. And when you get desperate, you'll do anything. Yeah. You'll negotiate anything. Yeah. You'll accept anything yeah. because you don't have the wisdom of God directing you because you've disconnected yourself from the source. And so when it's time to get in God's house, you're too tired or you're working a shift. Yeah. Or when you do come to God's house, you're in for a minute and you're out the next minute. Yeah. And you don't realize that God is giving you instructions on how to get the wealth. Yeah. So when you talked about that in First uh, Timothy chapter 6, it is necessary that we don't chase after things because that's not the way that God told us to do it. He said, I give you the power to get wealth. 
I will give you the power to get it. He never said he wanted us to toil for it or to put anything in front of him because when we put resources in front of God, in essence, they become an idol for us. Yeah. We're no longer ch uh, searching for God, but we're searching for the thing and we make the thing our God. Yeah. And another point that you had brought up, Apostle, before I, I go into the point I, I really want to break is you were talking about people chasing things for the wrong reasons mm -hmm. and it is a hard issue go with us to Luke chapter 16 because the reality is uh, the apostle Luke writes in Luke 16 and 10 he says he that is faithful in that which is least is yeah. also faithful. faithful in much yeah. and he that is unjust or dishonest yeah. with a little is going to be dishonest yeah. if I give you more yeah. it doesn't matter how much you get yeah. it's the, the, the determinant is your heart issue yeah if you have a little and you faithful over it, if I give you more, you will be faithful because it's not the seed that determines your level of faithfulness. It is the condition of your heart. So this is why people become bigger thieves when they get more. It, it's, it's always, well, when I get this, I'm going to do that. If you're not doing this with a little, you're not going to do it with a lot. You're just not going to do it. Because if you were a thief with $20, you're going to be a bigger thief if I give you $2,000. You just have greater opportunities to steal more from God. It's not about the condition of the seed, but it's the condition of your heart to determine how much more seed God will give you. And Luke is right. He said, he that is faithful in that which is least, you're also going to be faithful in much. And you that are unjust or unrighteous. In a little, you're going to be unrighteous if I give you more. Yeah. And I love verse number 11. He says, if you have not been, give it to me in NLT because I believe you have a greater appreciation for this version. If you have been untrustworthy with worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches of heaven? Wow. God said, if I can't trust you wow. with a Benjamin, why would I give you the ability to lay hands on the sick and they recover? Why would I give you the ability to prophesy and to speak and to shift atmospheres? Why would I give you the ability to change regions and begin to pull people and draw people? If I can't trust you with unrighteous mammon, money, if that's your God, you will turn on me for a dollar. Yeah. As soon as the opportunity arises for you to get more, you abandon your assignment to the kingdom of God in order to fatten your pockets because you have been faithful, unfaithful, and unrighteous mammon. And so I can't trust you with true anointings. Money is nothing to God. It is it's something to the world, but it means nothing to God. God can get you money as soon as you can blink your eye if he could trust you with it. The word of God says, blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth, and wealth and riches shall be in his house. This is the word of the Lord. You never have to chase for money, hunt for money, uh, manipulate for money, because when you fear the Lord according to the word of God, wealth and riches will be in your house, and not only your house, your children will be blessed as a result of it. You'll have generational wealth. Some of us, we don't have generational wealth because we don't fear the Lord. We have no fear for God. We only are abiding by the world systems because we're moved by our sight and we don't walk by faith. For the carnal man is the enemy of God. A friend of the world is an enemy to God. And when we're subscribing to worldly standards, we have positioned ourselves to be an enemy against God. The word of God tells us in Colossians that we've been translated yeah. from out of the world into the kingdom of his yeah. dear son. Yeah. God brought us over here to give us a new government, a new establishment, Kiana, a new order. He tells us the way to get wealth is to give. You wonder why you don't have? You got to ask yourself, how big of a giver am I? Because if you don't give, you cannot receive. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measures, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will men give into your bosom. The world says if you want more, you take it. That is the antithesis to the kingdom. 
The world says to hate your enemy. God says to love your enemy and bless those that curse you. Do good to them and speak well of them. God's kingdom is the total antithesis of the world. But some of us say we're in God, but we're still subscribing to worldly standards. So when God says to give, we say, no, the way to get more is to, to, to work more, is to store more like the rich young ruler. And I believe uh, Luke, 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 Luke chapter 12, yeah. who says, well, well, I I got so much. What can I do with all this? Sonia, he said the only thing he can think, it wasn't to give. Micaiah, his idea, because he had so much to get more. Well, I just tear my barns down and make bigger barns. Never did the thought cross his mind, Denise, to bless anybody other than himself because that is a hoarder's mentality. It is a worldly mentality. It is a Babylonian system that believes that I can get to wherever I want to be without God. That's the Babylonian mindset. You know the people that began to build a tower to heaven? They were trying to make a name for themselves, Kev, and they were trying to make a name for themselves without God. Hence the word Babel. You can hear it in Babylon. Yeah. And the, this world is under a Babylonian system. Yeah. I want to get and I want to achieve and I want to do it all without God's help. God. But I submit to you, beloved, you're never going to get anything that God has for you in his divine will if you're trying to do it without God. Because there is no system that can supersede our God. For at the name of Jesus, every knee has got to bow and every tongue has got to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Your money will bow. Your company will bow. Your relationships will bow. Your prosperity will bow. At the name of Jesus, everything will bow. And we have to believe the word of God or we'll continue subscribing to worldly standards. We have to understand that God is not giving out. The reason why we're not seeing a lot of the anointing in the earth today because God ain't trusting us with true riches. I can't trust you. I can't trust to give you a word in season because you'll use your gift and proselytize and, 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 and prostitute God's people. Yeah. I can't give you a gift to do yeah. that because you will use it and consume it upon your own lust. Yeah. I can't give you the anointing to do that because you will look for ways for you to get a come up and you will forget all about the kingdom's agenda. And as a result of this, we're seeing a lot of darkness in the land because God is not giving his anointing to people whose hearts are not right before God. Hallelujah. Money is your God. Hey. God said, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. I set up one and I take down another. Promotion comes from me. It don't come from the strength of your arm. And the sooner we understand this, we'll see the wealth of God in the house of God. We'll see God's people prospering. We'll see God's people blessing other people. We'll see God's people not down and out, but able to be a blessing. Because the word of God said, you are blessed to be a blessing. And I told you on last week, if you ain't blessed nobody in a long time, you have not experienced the blessings of God. Because God said, I bless you to be a blessing. These blessings shall overcome you and overtake you. you you shall be blessed in the city. Hey! You shall be blessed in the field. You shall be blessed when you go out. You shall be blessed when you come in. All nations shall call you blessed. For you shall be a delightsome land, said the Lord of hosts. God said, I want to bless you just like that. Shonda, we got to get this in our spirit. We got to have a transformation of our minds, people of God. This is not us waiting on God. God is waiting on us yeah. to shift our minds, yeah. to be not conformed to this world, to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. We understand the word of God when the Lord began in, in Genesis chapter 22. Yeah. Amen. And, and, and I'm not going to take a lot of time. I'm just going to kind of paraphrase it so that I can go to another passage of scripture. Right. Amen. But in Genesis 22, we see that the Lord... This is where we get the, the, the term Jehovah Jireh yeah. when he's making provision to offer his son, his favorite, his only son, Isaac, on Mount Moriah. Yeah. The word of the Lord had declared that he and his son and some of the servants, they're marching up to Mount Moriah to offer God a sacrifice. Well, let's just go there. Amen. Amen. I don't want you all to take my word for it. 
Genesis 22. Amen. And I'm just going to read a couple of the verses and paraphrase it at the same time. And I like this because it says, and then sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. When it comes to resources, Mariah, and wealth, God will often test us. He's testing us, Sonia, because he wants to know if he can commit to us true riches. He's testing us to see if you can handle the true riches. So the litmus test before the true riches, Ena, is can you handle unrighteous mammon? Can you handle money? Or is money your God? Because if money is your God, you won't get my anointing. He tests him because in Genesis chapter 12, 10 chapters over, he makes him the father of many nations. He pulls him out of the Ur of the Chaldees in Genesis 11. He pulls him away from his family who are idol worshipers. And he pretty much tells him, I'm going to send you to a land. Didn't tell him where he was going, but he's taking him out of Babylon, out of the Ur of Chaldees to take him into Canaan. And he says, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. Those that bless you, I'm going to bless them. Those that curse you, I'm going to curse you. And you all nations shall be blessed. You're going to be the father of many nations. And at this time, he has no children. It is just he and his wife, Sarai. And in Genesis chapter 12, he makes him this promise to make him the father. But some chapters later, we see he doesn't have his first child sent into Genesis chapter 16. The problem with this child in Genesis 16 is that he went to a resource to get his Ishmael. Let me rewind it a little bit. They were waiting for God at 75 and 65. They're believing God for a son. They didn't see it. It's not happening. So what they do, when they went down to Egypt one time, they came back after the Abimelech let him go right. because he lied and said that that was his sister. Right. He like, get, get, y'all, y'all get out of here. Y'all about ready to have me hung around yeah, here yeah. messing with God's people. Right. But when they left Egypt, they left with a little woman called Hagar. Yeah. She went back home with him. Yeah. And so after a while, Kai, when they feel like they couldn't get the promise that God had promised them in Genesis 12, they decided they were going to start helping him in around Genesis 16. So they left the source and made Hagar a resource. Because they didn't want to wait on the true source. They decided to help God and get a resource. Well, many of you are looking be befuddled about that because the reality is that's what many of us do today. When God does not move on our timetable, we want to call ourselves helping God. We go out of our way. God says, you can't hurry me. You're going to just have to wait. You're going to have to give me some time no matter how long it takes. I'm God and I'll be there in a hurry. You ain't got to worry. I may not come when you want me to, but I'm always on time. You're going to have to learn how to be strong and see the salvation of the Lord I don't need your help if I made the heavens and the earth I don't need your help if I breathed the ruach of God into your nostrils I don't need your help if I held the land back from the sea I don't need your help if I've given you dominion and told you to be fruitful multiply, replenish, subdue I don't need your help if I took a woman out of your side and made her woman and made you man I don't need your help if I set you in the garden of Eden told you to oversee it I don't need your your help if I've given you children I don't need your help if I set the stars up in the sky I don't need your help all I need you to do is to stand still mother and see the salvation of the Lord Abraham got the memo late Gerald he went and he started helping but he was under the encouragement of his wife because I believe she wanted the promise to come to pass but when God don't move when we want him to move it's not that he's not coming there are some things that you have to work out in yourself the reason why the delay is not there the delay is not because God is just slowing it down. It's some stuff you have to work out on the inside of you. Maybe you can't handle what God has promised you. Maybe you're not there yet because God don't want to promote you here and then the enemy pull you down because you don't have the ability or the anointing to sustain the place of promotion. And God is just trying to work some things out of you. But we want to hurry God just like Abram and Sarai did. And then Hagar, their handmaid, was given to Abram. And the Bible declares that Abram went into her and they bear a son named Ishmael. Ishmael simply means the Lord has heard my affliction. 
because Hagar is crying in the wilderness. And she's crying because she's been cast out by Sarah out of the house. And she names the boy, the Lord has heard my affliction. And God looks to Abram. He said, he's still not the son of promise. That's still not the source. That is a resource. And I never told you to go and do it by the strength of your hand. This lets me know you still don't have enough faith to believe me. So when the Lord finally gives him his son in Genesis, I believe chapter 21, he just gives him a new another son. The womb is finally fertile enough and Sarah gives birth to their beloved Isaac. And I believe that's in chapter 21. And in the very next chapter, chapter 22, the Lord asks for him back after he gave him to him in the chapter before. Some of you ain't liking that, hallelujah. And you accusing God of giving you something and taking it back. You do remember the word said, and the Lord God tested Abraham's faith. That's what he said. He's testing mother. He gave him in 21. He asked for him back in 22. Come on. And the scripture opens and it says sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. God, anytime God gives you any type of increase, he's going to allow it to be tested. Yeah. He wants to see if you can qualify for the Luke 16, 11, true riches. And the litmus test for true riches is how you handle what you hold so dear to yourself. If you love that more than you love God, then you're not qualified to handle true riches just yet. Some of us, it's not money. Some of us, it's people. Some of us put people before God. Some of us put business ventures before God. Some of us put our, our, our physique and our appearance before God. Some of us put unrighteous mammon before God. Some of us put our jobs before God. Some people are so foolish enough to put a car before God, a house before God. And you say, well, how am I doing that? When it's the Lord's day and you at home cleaning your house. When you're driving by the church on the Lord's day, instead of pulling into the house of God, you're driving by the house of God. We have to establish and understand that the enemy is a master tactician. He is a manipulator and he will make you feel justified in, in the stuff that you do against your God. That's why you got to search the scriptures because there's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. You have to constantly search yeah. the scriptures yeah. and see where you're erring from the faith. Yeah, like the Bible that. declares that Abraham and his son Isaac are going up and they're preparing to yeah. offer God a sacrifice. And Abram tells the servants to stay yeah. here yeah. while he and his son go to worship. Yeah. I like the expression, Kai, that he says, we're going to worship. Because anytime we offer God something that means something to us, yeah. it is a form of worship, beloved. When we give God our best, when we don't hold back on God, whether it's our verbal praise or accolade, whether it's our best gifts unto God, whether it's fasting and praying, when we offer God something that means something to us, it constitutes a form of worship. We're worshiping God. And Abram was saying, I believe, you know what? I believe, a, a Minister D, that God is going to make a way out of no way. Me and my son, we're going to worship. I cannot worry about the sacrifice just yet because the Bible says that Abram puts the wood on Isaac's shoulder while he, he holds the knife in the fire. And they're marching up to Mount Moriah. And Isaac, old enough to know better, to, to ask the fact, Father... We, we going up here well where's the sacrifice he not understanding that he is the sacrifice at that time but he not even understanding the pressure that is on his father at the time to believe God and I say to somebody who don't see your way through something go back to Genesis 22 and at the very last minute God will provide a ram in the bush even when you can't see a way out God said I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you I'm always there I'll be there they're in a time of trouble you never have to wonder because I'm always dependable and I never fail he's on his way up to Mount Moriah he's binding up his son to the degree he's about ready to take his life and the word of God declares that the Lord cries out to Abraham 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 
Don't put your hand on the lad. Now I see. Now I see. Hallelujah. I want you to see, hallelujah, this with your own eyes. Verse 11. Verse number 11. Go to verse 10 first so you can see it. It says, and Abraham picked up the knife to kill his son as a sacrifice. I got to ask you, Showers. I, I, I don't know anybody. I don't know anything more important than relationship. I don't have no possession that's more important than my marriage. No car, no house, no clothes, no jewelry. You can take it all as long as I'm all right with my husband. I'm all right with my children. I'm all right with my family, my, my church family. Things are nothing. And if we see this man offering up his son, what's more important to you than this? If it's money, there's some things we're going to have to do to get this right with God. Because this man is ready to offer the son from his loins. He's ready to give God his only son that he and his wife have as a sacrifice, a form of worship to God. What is it that you're holding back from God? What is it that's more important to you than your relationship with God? Because God is not your resource. He is the source of all blessings. He's ready to kill his son in verse 10 and in verse number 11. It says, at that moment, the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven. Mm -hmm. Abraham, Abraham. Yeah. Yes, Abraham replied, here I am. Don't lay a hand in verse 12 on the boy, the angel said. Do not hurt him in any way, for now I know that you truly fear God. Remember the first verse said it was a test. It was a test. Yeah, yeah. And it says, for I know that you truly fear God. Yeah. You have not withheld from me even your son, your only son. Ooh. I know that you truly what? Don't take my word. I want y'all to sit with yourselves. Fear God. When there is a healthy fear of God, of reverence and awe for God, there is nothing that we will hold back from God because we understand he is the source of every blessing. That's why Psalm 112 says, blessed is the man that feareth the Lord and delighted greatly in his commandments. Some of us don't give God our best because the fear is not where it needs to be. The word of the Lord declares, then Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught by his horns in a thicket. So he took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering in place of his son. In verse number 14, and Abraham named the place ah. Yahweh Yahweh, Jehovah Jireh. Yahweh Yahweh, Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord will provide this is where we get Jehovah Jireh from, where the Lord comes and provides a way out of no way. When you done set and did plan A, B, C, D, and then finally consult God on, on, on uh, letter number uh, Z, God has always been there and he's always been the solution. And he says here, I am your Jehovah Jireh. I am your provider. Yeah. To this day, people still use that name as a proverb. Yeah. On the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. And as we come, I want you to draw your attention to 1 Chronicles chapter 29. 1 Chronicles 29 to end this, this principle here that God is the source, not a resource. It will require you to have a shift in your mindset, particularly if you are still subscribing to worldly standards. The enemy will make it easy, will make it difficult for you to believe God. Yeah. And the only way that you want to break free from that yoke, like Chris said, Isaiah 10, 27, there's an anointing. When you grow fat in the anointing, it will destroy your yoke. And the only way you're going to become fat in the anointing is you cannot just be a hearer of the word. You have to be a doer of the word. Faith comes by hearing, but hearing by the word of God. But faith grows by some of y'all catching it. Faith comes by 
but faith grows by by doing that's the only way you're going to get the anointed not simply just hearing you're going to have to do the word of God the word of the Lord declares in first Chronicles 29 amen we're at the not the end of David's reign but we're approaching it and his son Solomon is being raised up as the king in his stead and God is desiring a temple from his people. He is no longer desiring to meet in tents, but he wants a tabernacle yeah. that is being constructed, Elena. Yeah. Yeah. So the word of the Lord declares this. Solomon is the son of David. The word of the Lord declares this. Then King David turned to the entire assembly and said, my son Solomon, whom God has clearly chosen as the next king of Israel, is what? Still young yeah. and inexperienced. On a side digression, this is why we often continue to tell y'all to pay to pray for Pastor Taylor and Pastor Chris because they're still young and inexperienced. It is an anointing that God has placed upon them, a priestly anointing, but they're young and inexperienced in it. And so they're under the tutelage of their parents. They're under the, the cultivation of their leaders. And so you have to be patient with people who God is raising up through the ranks. This is what we're seeing with King Solomon. He's young and inexperienced. The work ahead of him is enormous. For the temple he is building is not. It's not for people. As we're embarking on our 440 project, this is not you're doing a favor for me and Apostle. This is not a favor for the Campbell family. This is not for mere mortals. The temple is not built for mere mortals. It is for the Lord God himself. So as we're building the house of God and securing the house of God and it takes resources, guess what God is going to do? He's going to test us. You got to follow the, you got to follow the trajectory here. Remember I told you with the increase, God is going to test it. He gave Abraham increase and he tested him. We read in Luke about the condition. It's not if I give you a little or a lot, it's the condition of your heart. If you're unfaithful with a little, you're going to be unfaithful with a lot. If I can't trust you with money, I can't trust you with true riches. So what I'm going to do is give you the litmus test to see how well you handle finances. Some of us are having a Selah moment about this. I know it may be difficult for you to understand this, but we established in Romans chapter 3 and 4 that God was true and everybody else was a lie. It doesn't matter what your human ingenuity is telling you, your intellect, your degree, your pedigree, the world standard, none of that means nothing. If God said it, that settles it. There's no ifs, no ands, no buts, no maybes, no possibilities because God don't know how to lie. Right. And it's either the word of God is going to be our substrate and we're going to believe what God said, that's it and that's all, Amen. or we're going to continue to go back and forth with God and guess what? You will never be the benefactor of God's divine will for your life. Never be. We're here and we're about to build a tabernacle for God. And David is recognizing that his son is young and inexperienced. So even though his son is building God a tabernacle, it doesn't mean because he can't build the tabernacle, he abandons the project. Sometime when God doesn't use us as the instrument, we don't want to help the person that God is using. But David was a man of war. Yeah. David had blood on his hands. Yeah. David had killed people. He had been amongst the Philistines. He had done a lot of killing in his time on the run from Saul, on yeah. the run from enemies. And when God says, I'm ready to build me a tabernacle, I don't want the filth and the guilt of the on your hands to be a blueprint on the tabernacle on the house of God. I love you, David, but I don't love you that much to sacrifice my holy nature. So let your son do it. And all I need you to do is to assist him, direct him, lead him, help him, but I don't want your hand on it. And David had to be a big enough person to not take it personally. Some decisions we make, we're going to have to live with the consequences of it. 
Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And when lust is conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And when sin is finished, it bringeth forth death. God don't make you do anything. If you're doing something, you're doing it out of your own volition. And with every choice you make, you have to accept the consequences that come from that choice. It doesn't mean that God won't forgive you. But whatever comes with that decision, you have to prepare yourself to accept the consequences that comes with it. David had to accept the consequence that he could not build a house for God. The man after God's own heart could not even build God a house because his hands were bloody. That was a decision he made and he had to live with the consequence of that choice. So the word of God makes it clear in verse number one that the temple is not for David, it's not for Solomon, it's not for Rehoboam, it's not for Jeroboam, it's not for I, it's none of the kings, it is for God. I love this because in verse two it says using every what? Resource. I like it. The resource. resource. Our principle today is God is a source not a resource. He gives resources to men. The source provides resources. The source provides resources. And if he can use you as a channel, you will always be a resource in the earth realm for God. I need you to get this, people of God. The source provides the resource. And God says, when I put something in your hand and it's something that I need done for the kingdom's agenda and you obey it, you have been used as a resource in the earth realm. Because you only have it because I gave it to you. You don't have it because you came up with a good idea. You don't have it because you were so smart. You don't have it because you speak so well. You don't have it because you have 40 degrees. You don't have it because you got favor. Because the king's heart is in God's hands, according to Proverbs 21. And like the rivers of water, he'll turn it in whatever direction he will. God can promote you just like that overnight. I'm telling you my own personal testimony. I went to a job started on a Monday and by Wednesday two days later they made me a supervisor Shout out, I swore that man was trying to get after me I had to make it clear when he wanted to meet in the office look I'm married and I don't believe in turning no tricks is it this real he couldn't do nothing but just sit there and laugh it was real he said the person we're offering the position the pay differential won't be much for them to transfer from a line staff to here. But for you, it's a big jump because we just hired you two days ago. God will take you wherever he wants and he'll turn that king's heart whatever direction he want to turn it in. You don't have to fear the supervisor. You don't have to fear the resource, but your fear should be of the source. When God gives us something in the earth, you are a channel for God, for the kingdom of God. Some of our channels are clogged up. The, the, the channels are clogged, Apostle, because when it's time to pull the trigger for the kingdom, we, we, the, the resource has been used for Christian Lubitans. The resources have been used for 22-inch rims. The resources that have been used for a party to just go hang out. The resources have been used for a new shirt. And so when God is trying to get something done in the earth, he uses people. He uses his resource. We are God's ambassadors according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We are ambassadors for God. We are an extension, a representative of the kingdom. And we are supposed to be agents in the earth realm for the kingdom of God. And when God sends down the assignment, many of us can't fulfill it because we've utilized the resource for our own consumption. So Kai, this is why it takes something that was 11 days, 40 years. Because the very money that God had blessed them with when they left out of Egypt, they were making a God out of it. I'm not even going to go there because it will take us past our hour. 
when God led them out of Egypt after 430 years of bondage, I think in, in, in Exodus chapter 12, 13, one of those chapters, he blessed them with the wealth of Egypt. Yeah. Silver, gold, yeah. Yeah. everything that they needed. Yeah. I likened it until God paying them back for 430 years that they didn't get paid. Right. Right. And God said, I'm not going to let nobody take advantage right. of you. Right. They didn't give you what they were supposed to, but I'm going to get it to you. Yeah. And I'm going to turn Pharaoh's heart and make him bless you. They left out of Egypt with the wealth of Egypt, got and crossed the Red Sea, went into the wilderness. And when Moses took too long to come off the Mount Sinai, they took the same gold, the same silver, the same blessings that God had blessed them with out of Egypt. And they created them a God. Yep. That's what we do today. Yeah. When God blesses, how many of us truly consult God when God blesses us with something? Anytime I get any increase, the first thing I say, God, what is this for? Helen, I come to understand that everything in my possession is not for me. Yeah. That God looks at me as a resource, Sonia, and that I have to have the available resources that when he says to do something, I can do it and I have not consumed the resource. So the first question I ask is, what do you want me to do with this? Yeah. There have been times when he says, I want the whole check. Yeah. Jasmine, do you all to see how quiet the look, the faces and how quiet the church has gotten? Because if God can't trust us, Luke 16, 11, with unrighteous mammon, who will commit to us the true riches? It's a test, beloved. And we're looking to the resource as a God. And God is simply testing us. He goes here and he's telling David, he says, use every resource in my command. David is saying, everything God has given me, use it in the house of God. He says, I have gathered as much as I could for building the temple of my God. Now there is enough gold. Are you still trekking with me? There's enough silver. What else is there? Bronze and iron and wood as well as great quantities of onyx other precious stones costly jewels and all kinds of fine stone and marble in other words he spared no expense when it came to God there is no this is my church money and this is my money there is no this is my money for this if God said I want all of it that means all of it should be given not the part we want to give him because everything came from him Hallelujah! I love it I love this listen to this deacon I mean in verse number three David said and now I need y'all to track with me and don't take my word for it I need you to follow it in your own Bibles he says because of what my devotion to the temple of my God. I just want you to have a sea lie on that because of my devotion. This is why we tell you, you don't give out of compulsion, but out of devotion. Don't do me a favor because I'm not the recipient or the benefactor. When we give, it's for you. Anytime I give in the house of God, it's for my own personal benefit. You remember when Apostle took us to Psalm 50? And he says, the earth is the Lord's, the cattle on a thousand hill. I know all the birds on the, of the mountain. I know them by name. If I was hungry, I wouldn't even tell you. He says, I don't, do I eat the, the meat of bulls and drink the blood of goats? This is Psalm 50. And what God is saying is, anything you bring to me, I can't do nothing with it. Because I'm God. It, it, it's all mine anyway. You can't offer me anything that's going to surprise me because I'm the one who gave it to you first. But what God asked for, Jinx, he said, all that, when you give, that's for you. Because he goes back to the principle, give and it shall be given. Good measures, pressed down, shaken together and running over. So anytime we give, you're not giving because of God. You're giving because of yourself. That's what Genesis 8.22 says. He says, as long as the earth remains, there will always be seed, time, and harvest. Cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night. As long as the earth remains, you cannot put a seed in the ground and don't get a harvest on it. Not when you're planting it and watering it. As long as the earth remains, anytime you put seed, you're going to get a harvest. 
So when you sow seed, that's for your benefit. It's not for the benefit of God. What benefits God is your worship. What benefits God is your praise. What benefits God is your thanksgiving from the fruit of your lips. That's the thing that God looks for, not your sacrificial gift. And David said, because of my devotion in 1 Chronicles 29 and 3, because of my devotion to the temple of my God, because I love the house yeah. of God. One of the psalmists declared, he says, the enemy I almost slipped when I looked at the prosperity of the wicked Asia. When I saw how the wicked were prospering in Psalm 73, my feet had well now slipped. I almost lost my footing. Because I'm looking at how the wicked are prospering in their evil ways, yet I'm a child of God and I seem to be struggling. The psalmist says, I did not understand it and I'm looking at the wicked and I almost lost my relationship with God. And then he said, then I went into the house of God. It wasn't until I went into the house of God that I understood the end of the wicked. So David understood the, the, the necessity of the house of God. He understood how important it was to establish a house of God for the people of God. He said, because of my devotion to the temple of God, I'm giving all of my own private treasures of gold and silver to help in the construction. I don't have no private stash, David is saying. Whatever I have over to the side, if God needs it for the construction of the house of God, he can use it in order that people can get their aha moment, can get their revelation. Because some things you won't understand better by and by until you actually come into the tabernacle. You can pray at home. You can pray in the marketplace. You can pray in your car. But it's something that happens when you walk into the sanctuary, the holy place of the Most High God, where the presence of the Lord is, where the people of God are assembling in on one accord and the power of the Holy Ghost is in the house of God there is something that happens in the tabernacle that is not happening outside the house of God he says I want to offer my treasure in order to build God's construction he says this is an addition to the building materials I have already collected for his holy temple sometimes you can think you've given God enough and you got to go to your own private treasures You see that, Elena? He said, in addition, yeah, in, in other words, Burton, I had already given something, yeah. but I had my own private stash shot. I had to go in there and say, wait, 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 wait. Now, you, you holding back too much from God. God done been too good to you, David. You remember when Saul was chasing you, running you down, throwing his jealous javelins. He preserved your life. He kept you hidden in Philistine country for over a year, protected you with your enemies, and now you want to hold something back from God, the one who gave you the breath that you breathed who preserved your life how dare you hold anything back from him I believe David thought about that thing said just the fact that Saul ain't no longer on my track God you can have this you can have this you can have that God I thank you because I remember when I was in the cave of Adullam and I didn't know if I was going to live or die God and you gave me hope what will I hold back anything from you he said, I already gave this for the collection of the holy temple. Hallelujah. But Elder Denise, he said, I had to go back and give them my private treasures. Yeah. We all have a stash. I, I, I know y'all don't want to believe that, but we all have a stash, Kiana, that we don't want to acknowledge in the house of God. This is your emergency fund. Some of us done put some money in the freezer and we done wrapped it in emergency. You know what you've done to put away your own stash. But God has said, as long as you have your emergency fund, you will never come to me in an emergency. Because you will have no need to. You will think you got it all figured out. David goes in his private collection, his private treasure, and he gives the gold and the silver. And in verse number four, he says, I am donating more than what? 112 tons of gold from Ophir and 262 tons of refined silver to be used for what? Overlaying. For the overlaying of the walls of the building. And we come in God's house and say, why so extravagant? 
we established that the temple is not for mere men, but it is for God. There ain't nothing too good for God. And the reality is, if I had my way, that, that statue would be 24 karat gold. That would be 24 karat gold. Them buckets would be 24 karat gold. These seats would be made in gold. Everything would be laced in gold in the house of gold, in the house of God, girl, if, if I had them resources to do it. There will be no spared expenses when it comes to our God. There's nothing too good for our God. Thank you for tuning in to the Be Blessed broadcast. We pray that you were blessed by the message. If you were, please like, share, comment, and definitely subscribe. Or if you would like to order this message in its entirety, please go to our website at www.sbfaithcity.org and there you can sign up to partner with us for the Gathering of the Eagles where you receive all the messages in their entirety for Wednesday and Sunday. I promise you won't be disappointed. But remember, here at Showers of Blessings, we want you to be blessed.